begins on page 355 in the Book of Common Prayer. Today we celebrate the 10th Sunday of our Pentecost season. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And, and blessed, blessed be his, his kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name to Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. <coughs> Yeah. 
letter to the Hebrews. By faith, the people passed through the Red Sea as if it were dry land. But when the Egyptians attempted to do so, they were drowned. By faith, the walls of Jericho fell after they had been encircled for seven days. By faith, Rahab, the prostitute, did not perish with those who were disobedient, but she had received the spies in peace. And what more should I say? For the time would fail me to tell of Gideon, Barak, Samson, Jephthah, of David, and Samuel, and the prophets, who through faith conquered kingdoms, administered justice, obtained promises, shut the mouths of lions, quenched a raging fire, escaped the edge of the sword, won strength out of weakness, became mighty in war, put foreign armies to flight. Women received their dead by resurrection. Others were tortured, refusing to accept release in order to obtain a better resurrection. Others suffered mocking and flogging and even chains and imprisonment. They were stoned to death. They were sawn in two. They were killed by the sword. They went about in skins of sheep and goats destitute, persecuted, tormented, of whom the world was not worthy. They wandered in deserts and mountains and in caves and holes in the ground. Yet all these, though they were commanded for, commended for their faith, but did not receive what was promised, since God had provided something better, so they would not, apart from us, be made perfect. Therefore, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us also lay aside every weight and the sin that clings so closely, and let us run with perseverance the race that is set before us, looking to Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of the faith, who for the sake of the joy that was set before him endured the cross, disregarding its shame, but has taken his seat at the right hand of the throne of God. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Of earth and sky, 
But why do you not know how to interpret the present time? The gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord, Lord Christ. Christ. should pick and choose a gospel message based on a level of comfort. I recently even boasted that even though the gospel message had some hard sayings, I was going to preach the gospel lesson as it was presented. So when I first turned to our gospel reading earlier this week, I read it and then I said, uh-oh. <laughs> How about that gospel reading? Pretty rough. At first glance, today's gospel reading appears to be one of the most challenging, if not really disturbing, scriptures in all the gospels, especially among Jesus' words. I come to bring fire to the earth, and how I wish it was already kindled. Do you think I've come to bring peace to the earth? No, I will bring divisions to households. You think you're so smart? analyze this. Now these are not sayings that we normally put up on our refrigerators <laughs> or our bulletin boards. They are not the sayings that we teach our children in Sunday school, are they? Is this the same Jesus that many of us have come to know and love? The Jesus that comes to us in love and peace? Matthew tells us that when he saw the crowds, he had compassion for them because they were harassed and helpless like sheep without a shepherd. At the death of Lazarus, we read in John, when Jesus saw Mary Magdalene weeping and the Jews had come with her also weeping, he was deeply moved in his spirit and greatly troubled. Jesus wept. These readings give us some glimpse of the inner life of Jesus. Not just what he does, but who he is, and even how he feels. So is this Jesus of today's Gospel reading the same Jesus that we thought we knew? Well, yes. He is the same Jesus yesterday, today, and forever. Today's Gospel reading does, however, offer us another glimpse, if not a rare glimpse, into the inner life of Jesus. As Jesus journeys toward Jerusalem, he becomes more and more a source of conflict and division with the various forms of authority and their supporters. Jesus knows this road to Jerusalem will lead to his suffering and his death and his final resurrection. Jesus has seen the burning bush, and there is no turning back. The burning bush experience seems to bring about conflict, crisis, and chaos even. If you recall, after Moses meets God in the burning bush, he is led not into peace and harmony and resolution, but into direct conflict with Pharaoh himself. Moses' continued confrontation with the Egyptians built the necessary crisis and chaos that would eventually transform into liberation and a closer journey in to the Promised Land. The burning bush experience may have brought about the crisis and chaos that is found in darkness, 
but the light from the fire illumined the pathway for the transformation and even the purification of human hearts and human souls. Many times redemption may only occur after conflict and chaos or even suffering. Dietrich Bonhoeffer, one of my favorite theologians, writing from the jail of Nazi Germany, tells us that chaos and fragmentation is the edge where change is possible. A change toward wholeness. John the Baptist told the people during Jesus' baptism, I baptize you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and with fire. <clears throat> with a sense of apocalyptic urgency and a tone of a righteous frustration and maybe even a little anger, Jesus says, I came to bring fire to the earth. Now, folks, this is not a fire and brimstone sermon. <laughs> this is not a fire of condemnation or even judgment on his part, or certainly mine. It is the fire that can bring conflict, chaos, and division as God's word and his will clashes with the culture, clashes with the meaning and the values of this world. Back in Jesus' day, to be a follower of Jesus was divisive. To be a disciple of Christ could be a very divisive thing, even in one's own family. In fact, if, if you recall, Jesus' own family during the time of his life were in disagreement. <coughs> the townspeople said, is this guy crazy? And his own family even tried to reel him in. That's the kind of division that Jesus is talking about here. The kind of division that can happen, the conflict that can happen, is a result of discipleship. It is a fire of purification. It is a fire of transformation. It is the fire that leads the way like a pillar of light through darkness. It is the fire of redemption. Jesus appears to be impatient, but he's impatient on our behalf, don't you see? For the redemption of the world is found in the Magnificat, which is actually an Advent song. Mary waits for the redemption of the world. And so does Jesus wait. And in this passage, Impatiently for the fire that will bring the full redemption of the world. Is this Jesus of today's gospel a Jesus of love? Oh, yes, indeed. Like a vigilant parent who's concerned about their child's well being, especially on a journey, who gives instructions and warnings. And then impatiently waits for that phone call that assures that the child's safety is at journey's end. Some of you know what I'm talking about. So does Jesus care about us in this way. With the familiarity of maybe even tough love, Jesus challenges the know-it-alls, the know-it-alls of this world and us. To analyze this, to refocus on our lives, on what is the most important, to reprioritize our lives to what is most important, and that is the kingdom of God in the present time. And notice he didn't say the kingdom of God in the future or up in heaven, but to reprioritize, to analyze and get ourselves straight in the present time. So that that kingdom might be here, as we say in the Lord's Prayer every, well, at least every Sunday. 
He is challenging us to be prepared also for some deep sacrifices that can happen. Folks, if you're being the disciple of Christ, the discipleship that you should be, then there may be some sacrifices. A true commitment to God that shapes our values, that determines our priorities, our goals, and our behavior, may force us to make certain changes or even sacrifices in our lives, especially as our Christian principles may clash with all of these cultural values. Perhaps even in our own families, our friendships, in our work, in our leisure, in our stewardship, most certainly in our politics, in our relationship with others. We may have to reprioritize, reframe, analyze as to how it applies to the kingdom here on earth in the present time. Jesus is in effect saying, you spend a lot of time analyzing the interests of this world, not just weather, financial, oh, we spend a lot of time analyzing the things, the concerns of this world. Jesus is saying, you better analyze this, how to live your life in the kingdom of God in the present time. How to, in effect, live in the fire. Live in the fire. How to live in the fire of transformation. And sometimes change. Reprioritizing. To this end, Paul reminds us in our epistle reading today, let us run with perseverance the race that is set before us, looking to Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of our faith. Folks, we are not alone in this race. The light from the fire of Jesus himself will illumine our way. The fire of the Holy Spirit will give us strength and wisdom in our journey. And the fire of the good news and the word of God will sustain our hearts and our hopes. It will be our guide. The passage in today's gospel is not so much about judgment as it is about a call to committed discipleship. Committed discipleship in the kingdom of God. It is also a call to transformation and wholeness by the one who loves us and wants the best for us. This is a call for you. This is a call for St. Philip. And it is a call for me. May we hear his call. And follow his good will in discipleship. And not be surprised that that may cause conflict in this world. May it be so with us. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Amen.
Let us now stand and say together the Nicene Creed. The Nicene Creed is the outline of our Christian faith. It can be found on page 358 in the Book of Common Prayer. Together, we believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, when the Father and the Son he is worshipped and glorified, he is spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Prayers of the people are form three. You can find them in your service leaflet. Father, we pray for your holy Catholic Church. That we, that we all, all may be one. one. Grant that every member of the church may truly and humbly serve you. That, that your name may, may be glorified by all people. people. Remembering especially Justin, Archbishop of Canterbury, Pope Francis of the Roman Church, Michael, our presiding bishop, the bishops and ministers of the Episcopal Church and the Anglican community, Phoebe, our bishop, and Father Terry, our priest. We pray for all bishops, priests, and deacons. And that they may be faithful ministers of your word and sacraments. sacraments. Remember, and especially Joe, our president, Bill, our governor, and all mayors of Shelby County and the surrounding areas. We pray for all who govern and hold authority in the nations of the world. <clears throat> that, that there may be justice and peace on the earth. Give us grace to do your will in all that we undertake. That our, our prayers may find favor in your sight. Remember, and especially Elena, Alton, Shirley, Jim, Jane, Lynn Lay, Jessica, Susan, Carolyn, Rusty, Larry, Elizabeth, Sonia, Weatherly family, Jason, Holly, and Sandra. Have compassion on those who suffer from any grief or distress any grief or trouble. That they may be delivered from their distress. Give to the departed eternal rest. Let light perpetually shine upon them. We pray, we praise you for your saints who have entered into joy. May we also come to share in your heavenly kingdom. In the diocesan cycle of prayer, we pray for the Tennessee Episcopal Lay Layman's Conference. We pray for the West Tennessee Hayden Partnership Mission. We pray for the Village Mission in Liberia, Africa. We pray for peace, the peace of Jerusalem. Yes. We pray for peace among all nations. Yes. We pray for peace for our own nation. Amen. We pray for the protection and comfort of all those who serve this country in foreign and domestic lands especially Trevor Holly, Rachel Miller, 
and Jacob Stevens. We pray for Christians that are being persecuted throughout the world. The altar flowers are given to the glory of God by St. Philip in honor of Operation Tech Lab. Let us pray for all members of our parish family <coughs> celebrating the birthday. Let us pray for all members of our parish family celebrating an anniversary this week, especially Bob and Sharon Miller, Jeff and Vicki Wingo. Let us pray for our own needs and those of others. We continue to pray for the country of Ukraine. And we give thanks for all the blessings in this life. Amen. 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 O Lord, our God, accept the fervent prayers of your people. In the multitude of your mercies, look with compassion upon us. In all who turn to you for help. For you are gracious, O lover of souls, and to you we give glory, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Let us now confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Our confession can be found on page 360 in the Book of Common Prayer. <clears throat> Together. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and will not repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy upon you. Forgive you all of your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness. And by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you into eternal life. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also, and also with, with you. you. Peace. 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 Switched, not switched. I also added to everything that was theatrical. 
Um, both of those things were just yeah, 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 they did. Um, we're delighted that you're here. Thank you. Thank you. We were uh, comparing notes and talking about folks that we knew, and <laughs> she made the comment, you were with the cool group. <laughs> Martha was steady. Her feet was on the ground. Uh, you know, the problem with being in the so-called cool group is that sometimes your ego and your life gets tossed around <coughs> to and fro. Sometimes even your ego gets mixed up in things, but not Martha. Steady. Uh, bless you. <laughs> a few announcements. We want to welcome uh, not only Martha, but also our other guests and visitors with us. We're so glad you're here helping us to worship. You are helping us to worship this, uh, this Sunday. We thank you for being here. If you can, uh, we have a little goodie bag that one of the ushers will give you before you leave. Uh, you can also fill out a card. Uh, that might let us know how we can help you. Not that we're going to hound you or harass you, <laughs> but uh, please let us know how we can help you. <clears throat> a reminder that our healing service continues on Wednesdays at 1210, such a sweet service. Holy Eucharist. <coughs> if you didn't have a chance to go to the men's breakfast, too late. <laughs> this morning was the last Sunday for the men's club breakfast. The layman's conference is next weekend, and, and so that's always our marker to, to end our men's club breakfast. Uh, and it has been something else. Um, I want to thank everyone involved with that men's club breakfast. For those that came early, and there are those who come as early as 5 o'clock in the morning to get ready, uh, the cooks, the servers, uh, the, the behind-the-scene folks, uh, there are just a number of people involved to make that happen. And, uh, and also just a labor of love, you know. Uh, they, they enjoyed it. Uh, they knew what they were doing. They were serving you all. And it was an opportunity for them. So, uh, how about a special hand? <laughs> and I cannot believe I'm going to have to wait another year to get bacon. <laughs> I feel too guilty to do it otherwise. <laughs> Remember our ongoing ministries here, the Thistle and Bee ministry, uh, that ministers to sex trafficking victims, also our prescription bottle ministry, uh, as well as our food bank ministry, which is in, um, has forever needs to that. A reminder, it's actually not too late. I'm sure it's not. The Layman's Conference is uh, next weekend, August 19th through the 21st. If you are interested, or maybe you changed your mind at the last minute and we would like to go, uh, uh, please contact uh, me or, or the office. David Delich uh, knows information about that. He's going himself. Uh, so please sign up and go with some of the fellows at St. Philip. Well, I do want to remind you, it's this afternoon that Barry Oliver will be the featured organist at the Memphis Chapter of American Guild Organist concert and it is at the Lord of Life Lutheran Church uh, at three o'clock this afternoon. If you want to find out more information in our Thursday newsletters you can look that up and there's more information there. But for all of those that might be interested or that can go, we would love to go and support Barry in this effort. Are there any other announcements that we might need to make? Do we have any birthday celebrations today? 
We didn't have any listed, but if you missed yours, you're certainly welcome to, to get a blessing. And how about anniversary celebrations? Uh, I've heard those names. Come on up. Gracious God, Father of all, we give thanks for another year of these lives shared in human love and in your love that never fails. Bless this couple in all that is yet to come, confirming and strengthening in them the vows which they have made to one another in your name. Keep them faithful until they must part in death and bring them together at last into eternal life. Amen. 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 I bless you with this holy oil in the name of the Father and the Son. Do I have to bless you twice just in case? <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. I think you're both Spitfires, so congratulations. Thanks, how long? How long? 59 years. Oh my goodness. <laughs> now, that's against our culture, isn't it? <laughs> right? Yeah. You rebels, you. I <laughs> Congratulations. And we're so glad that you're here with us. We are. <laughs> Remember the words of our Lord Jesus. It is more blessed to give and to give of ourselves than to receive.
be with you. And also, also with, with you. you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It, it is, is right, right to give him thanks, thanks and praise. praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. For by water and the Holy Spirit, you made us a new people in Jesus Christ our Lord to show forth your glory in all the world. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven who forever say this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Savior Christ. 
Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy, thy kingdom, kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Alleluia, Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Alleluia. O Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. And have mercy upon us. O Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. And have mercy upon us. O Lamb of God, take away the sins of the world. Grant us thy peace. The gifts of God for the people of God. Take it in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. Thank mm -hmm. you. 
today and for all of those that we have prayed for. The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ keep you into everlasting life. Amen. Amen. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace, and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Now may the blessings of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be with you for the rest of this Sabbath day for your upcoming week during our great Pentecost season and forevermore. Amen. Amen. Amen.